Welcome to Safe Team Solutions. My name is Gabriel, safety consultant at Safe Team Solutions. My name is Mike, senior safety consultant at Safe Team Solutions. In this video, we will attempt to clarify personal conveyance and yard moves. We may be a little redundant in some areas in order to help the understanding of these rules. FMCSA regulations guidance states, a driver may record time operating a CMV for personal conveyance, i.e. for personal use or reasons, as personal conveyance status only when the driver is relieved from work and all responsibility for performing work by the motor carrier. The CMV may be used for personal conveyance even if it is laden, since the load is not being transported for the commercial benefit of the carrier at that time. Personal conveyance does not reduce a driver's or motor carrier's responsibility to operate a CMV safely. Motor carriers can establish personal conveyance limitations either within the scope of or more restrictive than this guidance, such as banning the use of a CMV for personal conveyance purposes or imposing a distance limitation on personal conveyance or prohibiting personal conveyance while the CMV is laid. We recommend that if a, if a motor carrier imposes any limitations on personal conveyance, Advance, that they should include it in their driver handbook, manual, or company policy, and be sure the driver signs for and is trained in this policy before operating a CMV under dispatch. We recommend this in order to protect ourselves from any litigation that may occur as a result. Personal conveyance can be used when the driver is using the vehicle on his own time for personal transportation. This time does not count against the driver's log time. It is counted as off-duty time. But as of the mandate, personal driving may be visible on the ELD device for law enforcement. Personal conveyance can only be used in certain circumstances. The driver is truly on personal time, relieved of all work-related duties and responsibilities. The driver cannot be performing work-related activities such as fueling, taking the vehicle in for maintenance, bobtailing toward a load for pickup, etc. The driver can never use personal conveyance in order to advance a load or bring them nearer to a pickup or delivery location. Examples of legitimate personal conveyance uses include the following. Driving from en route lodgings like a hotel or truck stop to restaurants or running other nearby personal errands. Basically, if you're using the truck as a personal vehicle for personal reasons. This also applies to time spent traveling in a motor coach without passengers to en route lodging, such as motel or truck stop, or to restaurants and entertainment facilities, and back to the lodging. In this scenario, the driver of the motor coach can claim personal conveyance provided the driver is off-duty. Other off-duty drivers may be on board the vehicle and are not considered passengers. Commuting to and from your normal work reporting location, office, or yard terminal. FMCSA regulations state, in these scenarios, the commuting distance combined with the release from work and start to work times must allow the driver enough time to obtain the required rest restorative rest as to ensure the driver is not fatigued. Number three, time spent driving to the nearest reasonable, safe place to park after unexpectedly running out of hours because of delays at a shipper or receiver. In some cases, some shippers or receivers allow the truck driver to take their 10-hour break on their property. If so, this is the option that should be taken. If this is not the case, a driver can use personal conveyance to get to the nearest truck stop or resting area. Or in the case where a driver is transporting hazardous materials, a safe haven to take their 10-hour break. We'll clarify this term safe haven shortly. In other words, this is defined as time Time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to obtain required rest after loading or unloading. The time driving under personal conveyance must allow the driver adequate time to obtain the required rest in accordance with minimum off-duty periods under 49 CFR Part 395 property carrying vehicles. <clears throat> Before returning to on-duty driving, the resting location must be the first such location reasonably available. What is the nearest reasonable rest area or truck stop? It should be the first available truck stop or rest location. You cannot pass by an open truck stop in order to advance your load or take your load closer to your next pickup. This is a way that drivers try to cheat the rule. You are stopped. You can receive a citation and be put out of service for 10 hours. And these points are carried on your record. Number four, driving to the nearest rest location after being asked by a police officer to move the truck. Notations should be made on the driver's ELD and they should let his dispatcher know. Time spent traveling in a motor coach without passengers to en route lodging such as motel or truck stop. Number five, 
Time spent transporting personal property while off duty. Once again, the CMV is being used for personal use and is not advancing a business load. The driver is still responsible for not exceeding his maximum driving time. Number six, authorized use of the CMV to travel home after working at an offsite nearby location. Examples that would not count as personal conveyance and therefore must be counted as on duty drive time include the following. Number one, the movement of a CMV in order to enhance the operational readiness of a motor carrier. For example, bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or other scheduled motor carrier destination. This also includes leaving the house or residence under dispatch and heading toward your pickup. In other words, advancing your load or pickup. Number two, after delivering a towed unit and the towing unit no longer meets the definition of a CMV, the driver returns to the point of origin under the direction of the motor carrier to pick up another towed unit. The driver is under dispatch and is on duty. They cannot use personal conveyance for this. Number three, continuation of a CMV trip and interstate commerce in order to fulfill a business purpose, including bobtailing or operating with an empty trailer in order to retrieve another load or repositioning a CMV tractor or trailer at the direction of the motor carrier. Once again, this is on duty time when the driver is under dispatch. Number four, time spent driving a passenger carrying CMV while passengers are on board. Off-duty drivers are not considered passengers when traveling to a common destination of their own choice within the scope of this guidance. Number five, time spent transporting a CMV to a repair shop for vehicle maintenance or fueling is not personal time. This must be recorded as on-duty time. Number six, if after the driver is placed out of service for exceeding the maximum on duty or driving time permitted under Part 395, the driver cannot use personal conveyance for the time spent driving to a rest location unless so directed by an enforcement officer at the scene. Bear this in mind, if trying to cheat the system by passing the nearest reasonable rest stop or truck stop. Number seven, time spent traveling to the motor carrier's terminal after loading or unloading from a shipper or a receiver. We have known drivers who are in a hurry to get home and drive several hours past the maximum allotted on duty or drive time. This is a dangerous precedence, particularly if the driver becomes involved in an accident. Number eight, time spent driving a motor coach when luggage is stowed. The passengers have disembarked and the driver has been directed to deliver the luggage. In this scenario, the driver is still under dispatch and operating the motor coach under direction. This is on-duty driving time. Personal conveyance is not allowed in this situation either. Number nine, to reiterate, personal conveyance cannot be used for anything that advances your load or the motor carrier's business while under dispatch, other than looking for the nearest place to park in the situations above. Finally, as mentioned, we want to clarify the term safe haven as used by the FMCSA. The FMCSA's safe haven rule is perhaps one of the FMCSA's most misunderstood and misquoted rules. Drivers often assume the rule applies to safe and available parking, but that's not always the case. Safe haven rules only apply to certain hazmat drivers. There is no safe haven rule that allows non-hazmat drivers to exceed hours of service. The term safe haven applies to parking locations for hazmat drivers. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Remember to share with your friends and colleagues and leave comments.